Hey, hey, it's Mel. I want to do a quick video to help some of my crafty friends get started. Uh, a lot of you have mentioned and asked me to do, you know, a way to show you how to get your SVG files once purchased from an outside SVG source, meaning other than a Cricut cartridge, um, how to get them to your Cricut Design Space. Now, um, in this video, I'm going to show you through uh, Cricut Design Space. I also have a Cameo, but I have to be honest and say that I found it much easier to use my outside SVG cuts um, in my Cricut versus my Cameo. In the Cameo, you have to do a lot of different tracing and um, bypass filters, at least I found anyway. And I had a lot of trouble with the double line, so I think I just need a little bit more practice in that uh, software, but either way, I have to say that my Cricut Explorer Air um, made things really easy. I didn't have to do any of that, so I've been doing all of my cutting on my Cricut Explorer Air uh, for this particular thing. So um, I'm going to show you how to do so on um, once you purchase a file. So I'm going to show you right here on my scrap check. So um, right here too, just while I'm on here, they have a really great sale going on right now that is. Um, the dollar sale. So basically if you fi buy five or more items, you pay only a dollar each. So that's really cool. And you'll get this little bunny box that is so adorable. I'm definitely getting that. That says with purchase of five dollar uh, sale items. They always have really great sales like this that you almost feel bad paying so little for such cute things. But you know, it, it helps you when you're trying to add to your collection. So what you want to do if you're on you know, this site or any other site, um, you want to make sure you create um, your member login. So I'm just going to do that quickly. Um, and let's just type this in. And we're going to go login. So then we're going to go to order history. And then right here it's going to show you what everything you ordered. And um, even prior to them contacting me to be a design team member, I had my share of cut files because I love them. So some of you may remember some of the boxes I made. I made that fall banner with the little Indian girl and Indian boy. Um, I had made all those uh, for Maya's birthday party or Halloween party. We made this little witch box. I made the black cat watch. I, I did the mad scientist box. So there's a lot of things in here that um, I really loved even prior to this. So um, what you're going to do is, let's see, I'm going to try to pick one for a sample. So if you're trying to make something, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to select your item. So here's this here. So you're going to actually want to go, and even if it's not this website, they're going to be similar. So you want to go into your downloads. And one really good thing about my scrap check is that they hold all your prior purchases here on the actual website where some places do not do that they're kinda on your own once if you don't download them within a certain time they delete so that's one good thing here because you can recover because I actually got a new laptop I had to clean out my whole laptop so I was really happy to see that I could easily get back to even my some of my older purchases dating back to you know years past so what you want to do is you want to find um, I click downloads for this particular website um, and then you're going to want to find whatever item that you're looking for. So let's do A2 envelopes. So it says show download options. So I click that. And then you're going to want to click this uh, click this once. And as you see, it bounced down. I have a Mac. And it went into my downloads. So it went down here. So there's this little bar showing. I don't know if that's going to show you guys on the screen. But it's a little bar that's showing you its progress. So once you do that, and you are going to want to go to, and I happen to do it in Chrome. I've had some trouble with Cricut and using, I normally um, operate on Safari on my Mac, but they said that Chrome's a little bit better because I kept having to do the download the plugin and had some issues with that. And I still currently am even on Safari, but it happens to be going well on my Chrome on here. So that's what I'm in. So make sure you're signed in. And now we are at Cricut Design Space. So make sure you're signed in in the upper left. You'll see Melissa. And if you guys ever have problems with um, not being able to find, like one time I couldn't find and I got a little upset because I have quite a few Cricut cartridges. But for whatever reason, it wasn't showing up that the ones that I actually owned, it wasn't showing up that I owned them any longer. So, you know, I call, and even though I saw my name signed in over here and here, after hours waiting on hold on the Cricut thing and finally talking to somebody, I just needed to sign out and sign back in. So even though I was signed in, and I know this doesn't make any sense because it didn't make any sense to me, even though I saw my name up here, you just 
had to sign out and then re-sign back in. Of course, make sure you remember your password because that could be a whole nother issue. Um, and then everything showed up fine. So I guess it just needed to be refreshed. So now if you want to go from, you know, so we did, we have our SVG file downloaded in our downloads. So just make sure wherever you put it, you could do it to your desktop, wherever you put it, just remember where you put it. That's the hardest part. So then you just want to go over here to upload images and you're going to click that. And this is where you're going to go anytime you're bringing something new into um, your library that you want it to be stored on the Cricut Design Space. So it's going to take a second and then here's all my images that I have here. Um, just prior different things and um, from different freebie cuts and um, just a plethora of things that I've cut out and here's the XOXO project and sometimes it takes a little bit to upload because you may have a good amount and here's the card I made um, so there it goes now it's not grayed out so here's the one so it, at this point if I wanted to use this is how you're also going to access your library it's kind of weird because every time you think like why am I clicking upload images um, over here when I need to just get my old images but it just brings you to your uploaded images as well as getting new ones. So right now we want to get a new one. So we're going to, over here, we're going to click image um, and we're going to click upload image. Then we're going to click browse right here because we're finding it on our computer. Now, I am no computer genius. <laughs> I do not even know what a DXF file is, a BMP is. I know what a JPEG and this PNG sort of, I think they're the pictures, but I don't know what this other stuff is. You computer gurus may know what that is. I don't know if it's just a different file to be used. I mainly work with SVGs. That's the only one I know what it is. So um, what you're going to want to do once you click this browse button and you're going to find wherever you put that, you know, the, remember that one we just downloaded? Just wherever you put it. So if you put it on your desktop, you would obviously click desktop. Mine's still in my downloads. It's just easier for me to keep it there. And as you see, all my other junk in here. So then you're just going to want to look. And we did. So right here, this MSC is how it's going to come up. So that stands for my scrap check. So that's their file. And then we're just going to do our A2 envelope. So you're going to click that. So then it's going to pull over here all the things that it gives you. And again, this could be for you computer geniuses out there to know what DXF and all that stuff is. But for right now, I only want the SVG. Um, what another thing real quick I want to show you is a lot of times they give you um, like a JPEG like a picture like a tutorial especially if it's something a little more difficult but I think I can handle this one so I'm just gonna go click SVG so that's what you're gonna want to click if you um, are doing with your Cricut so then over here is all the envelopes that it gives you so there's a small scallop a cute scallop a clean line um, a chunky scallop and a bracket so let's go with a cute scallop. Oops, and I hit small. So we're going with small scallop. So then if this is what you want, and if it's not, you click on this, and it'll kind of, I like how it shows you really quickly, um, and I like how it's colored, um, and you can see in there. So we will go with cute, but I'm just going to show you the other ones it gives you. So just in case you want to buy this file. So um, these envelopes are already sized for A2, I believe. I don't know if I have to do something to them once they get over here, but we shall see. So let's go with this cute scalp. So once you are happy with this, you hit open. So, and it's kind of as easy as that. So once you hit open, this is gonna take a second. And right over here, you, you can see it's a little grayed out and it says, we are converting your image into cut paths. Each color will be a different layer. Um, name and tag your image. Nine times out of 10, I'm lazy and I just leave it as what it is, which it says cute scalp. Cute scalp works for me. Maybe you just want to quickly add envelope or you could put A2 envelope. A2. There we go. Then you could put tags in here. You could put um, favorite or one I like or whatever you want to put in there so that way when you type it up because eventually you are going to love this. Once you get this figured out and don't be scared. Like I am, like I said, not anywhere close to being a computer genius and I figured it out. There was some some uh, blood, sweat, and tears. I've made several calls to the line, but I was determined. Like I thought, I'm smarter than this. I can do this. So don't be intimidated by these things. Um, I know they can be frustrating, and don't expect to on your first cut, although I did pretty good with mine. But as they get more tricky, you're, you're going to mess up. There's going to be things, but once you learn it, you're going you're gonna to have a better understanding of it. So anyway, we have in here what we like, so that looks good, and we're just going to go down here to the bottom right where it's green and click Save. So once you save it, it's going to go back to that whole list of your uploaded images for you to search for later. So it's going to take a second, and up at the top left you see Vector Image Data is Saved, whatever that means. Um, 
I know there's some like vector tracing and all that, but I, I don't get into all that, not yet anyway. So for now, this is all you really need to know. And, I, and whenever this takes its jolly old time, I'll show you where it goes. So here we have it. So as you see, um, you're gonna see your new added image right here. So then if you wanna use set image and see how there's a green line going on there, that's your way of selecting it. So we're gonna click this image and then see how there's a checked um, thing up in here. Also, if you want to hit this little um, info button, it tells you uh, where it's from or what the name of it is and the model number, and you can hit delete. Um, this is more beneficial when you have, let me see if I have one in here. It's going to take forever to show me my more ones. See, it's going to keep going gray because I have so many. So when, I'm trying to see if I have any Cricut ones on here. My Cricut ones are stored in a different area, so I guess not. But that would be more beneficial if you want to see... Um, like what cartridge it's from, that's where it really helps you because I used to know all the cartridges fairly well. Well, this is a Cricut one, I think. So this is Rose Blossom. So it, it'll it'll tell you what cartridge it's from in case you need to buy more pieces or you didn't remember because I used to be really good at remembering and then they really got so many, one, so many cartridges and I kind of fell off with that. So now we hit insert and it brought it to our project. So we're this is ready to cut, ready to go. Let me see if this is sized. I believe it is. Yep. Um, this is already sized for an A2 size card. So here's our 12 by 12 mat if you can figure it. So this is already sized and ready to go. And the great thing is, uh, one of my favorite things is how detailed they are over at my scrap check. This uh, right here that you're looking at, it, it's a score line and you don't have to change your blade or switch your blade out. Your blade will cut around the edge and then just do these little skips. Like and kind of like somewhat slice it, but not fully cut it. And by doing that, it's just you fold it already. You don't have to worry about lining it up on your scoreboard or scoring it through the wrong uh, measurement. Everything's ready to go. And then when you're ready, all you have to do is hit go. So you hit go on your mat, and it brings you to where you need to go. Or actually, when you, let me show you this. So see right here, this is good, it showed you this. This is another trick, and this had me frustrated for so long. Um, this is your score line. And this is your envelope, and they have separated it. And I don't know why Cricut seems to have made some things more difficult than they needed to be, but um, either way, we'll figure it out. So what you're going to want to do before you go to your go, like this is your create screen. So you want to click the item, you want to select it, or you could just hit the select all right here, and then you're going to want to go over to attach, and that's in your layers tab. So make sure your layers tab is on, and you're going to want to hit attach. And then when you hit attach, it's going to keep everything that you want where you want it when you hit go. So watch, when we hit go now, it should have it all on one mat. There we go. That's what we want. We didn't want the score line separate because why are we scoring a plain piece of paper on an additional mat? We're not. So we want it all on one. So now we would just hit go, and here we have a matching envelope we can cut out to our card that we, you know, make. So um, also, this feature, this is, this is something I wish I knew in the beginning. So let me just go over that one more time. So let's go and I'm gonna hit this, I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna hit detach. So if you were um, if you were going to make say, like I always use this as an example, but for Talia's first birthday, I made these little mini heads and <laughs> it sounds funny, but these little mini mouse heads and I did a mini mouse head and then like a little clothes um, line clip behind it and then each clip was going on a banner and each one I had a, a one, a two, so that would represent uh, month one. So I had a picture of Talia for every month on her first birthday from uh, month one to 12 months old so that you could see her progress and it was a cute little decor for her Minnie Mouse theme. Anyway, I had this really pretty black glitter paper that I wanted to use but I figured out how I could get these all these little mini heads sized so I could fit it on one sheet of paper, one 12 by 12. But for whatever reason, the way they were, the way Cricut spaced it, before I learned this trick and I would hit go, it had me on six different mats. So that boggles my mind, the fact that I could fit it, but I had to turn them. Like when you see it, when you do this, if you're new here, if you have, say this is your image right here, if you push this little arrow that's curved, see this curved arrow, you can drag this and turn it. So I had to do a lot of this, a lot of that, to try to turn my Minnie Mouse head to fit them all in to fit them all on the page. But after I did that, when I would hit go, it would bring me down to have to where I have to hit six different pages. 
So you don't want to do that. So if you want to keep whatever, after you're done working and you get your item back to where you want it, like say you only have a scrap piece of paper that's only in the top left of your mat and you want it to get over. What you must do is hit select all and make sure that everything you have is selected. Then you make sure you're on your layers tab and hit attach. And that is key. Then you hit go. And then this brings you to your actual cutting mat. And then I'll put it where you had it on your mat. So let me just show you that again. This is like very, very important. So if you have this and you're over here and if you, you want to hit select all, then you want to make sure in your layers tab and you want to hit attach, but we're already attached. That's why it's not highlighted. So if you need to detach it, that's obviously right there. So make sure it's attached and then you hit go and it'll take it to on your mat where you want it to be. So hopefully that makes sense and hopefully this helps somebody. This is just a, you know, installment of, of Mel of a, um, just to kind of have some little tips on how to get started in your SVG cuts and just start with something small like this. Like this is, you know, and even this can be a little intricate because if you go to move this and you didn't attach it, you would have not these lines on there. But what I like about the Cricut at least is that I don't have to go and mess in my settings for like a high pass filter and, you know, make the cut line smaller and I'm not getting them double lines I was getting over in Cameo. So that's something I eventually want to learn. But I, could, I was getting so frustrated because I had things to do. I had things to make and it wasn't allowing me to make them when it's giving me double cut lines because it, it was cutting the heck out of my project. So I didn't want that. So um, one thing I was thankful for was having my Cricut because it didn't do all that. It was, it was a lot, lot easier here than it was in my Cameo. I'll say that. So um, anyway, if anybody has any questions, let me know. Hopefully this helps somebody. Hopefully this made sense. And, you know, if this works out and you guys let me know, um, I'll try to make a few more videos of just simple little tips like this to, you know, kind of help you along. Because I really encourage you to try these outside SVG files. That's what we got these machines for. You know, I had the expression and I wanted to upgrade so that I could venture out and try, you know, different online companies. Because they have just the cutest, the cutest, cutest files. Um, and not to say I don't like my Cricut cartridges anymore, but, you know, you, you you're tastes change and you want to, you, sometimes you get tired of different things, you want to try different areas and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's all part of the learning process. So anyway, thank you guys for watching and hopefully, like I said, this helps someone and um, I will post more videos if you let me know that this does help. So thanks for watching guys. Bye.